Hello, DevOps friends. Welcome to a full stack live here on Obsative. Wow, I've, I haven't been as on time as today in a long time. Uh, yeah, I'm really doing my best to be on time to uh, announce the stream in advance and um, welcome. Uh, I'm, I'm psyched to have you here and um, I'm looking forward to doing another interesting live coding stream with you. Today we are going to do some work on my company's hosting platform, some infrastructure work and some feature work, which means um, we are doing stuff that uh, uh, in, a, in part is geared towards our operating team and uh, one uh, feature that is geared towards our customers. And um, so it's a nice little mix. It's also a mix between infrastructure coding using Chef and um, uh, deploying a Ruby on Rails application. So um, there's various stuff. It's the variety hour on <laughs> Full Stack Live, I guess. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting a few things done. If you're not familiar with the stream, um, I'm Jochen. I'm uh, a uh, German system administrator um, and uh, a business owner. Um, I've been li living uh, near Dublin, Ireland for the last 10 years now. And um, I've been doing this stream for quite a while, for a few years as well. Um, but um, Twitch is not my main streaming platform anymore. I've moved my main platform to my self-hosted own cast instance over on live.obstative.com. Um, you can join us there if you prefer a, an ad-free and uh, more privacy-oriented uh, streaming platform. And uh, just the other day, I switched our chat to our Discord community server because um, this community server has been getting a little bit of TLC lately and uh, it's just fitting that we also use it for this stream. So if you'd like to chat, um, pop on over uh, and uh, join us in there. Um, the exclamation mark Discord command on Twitch will tell you uh, how to join us over there. Other than that, yeah, uh, I'd uh, like to invite you to uh, join us in chat. Let's make this thing interactive and not a two hour long monologue on my part. Um, people are joining this Discord server. That's nice to see. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. The water is warm. Um, so, uh, yeah. Let's make this thing um, a two way street. Uh, I'd love to learn what you are doing. Um, love to learn what uh, you are interested in, what brought you to the stream, um, how's life, how's the weather in your neck of the woods, uh, anything that you'd like to share, um, we can make that happen. happen. G forever, welcome to the chat, welcome to the stack, good to have you, happy that you've joined us. Okay, so um, anything else? Um, uh, well, I don't think so, so let's get going. I've picked up feedback from, uh, Tuesday stream, um, and, uh, increased the, um, font size of my terminal here for my stream, um, terminal. I hope it's uh, easier for you to read, even uh, for the older of you, people such as um, Exegetio. RJ, hey, how you doing? Okay, so let me see. Um, RJ asks, uh, back on the Keychron, um, RJ, join us in the stream chat channel, um, then we can see your uh, posts on screen as well. Um, screen is nice and crisp, that's good to hear, that's nice, uh, happy to hear it. Uh, I, I, I put so much effort into uh, 
uh, getting the stream working um, 100%, for example, the audio issue that's been plaguing me for the last few hours, uh, f f few weeks, uh, seems to be finally um, uh, resolved. Um, so answering RJ's question, um, uh, it's not a Keychron, it's a Zoom 65. Um, but it's uh, definitely uh, very similar to um, uh, the 70, the 65 percent uh, Keychron. Um, it's a, a very affordable keyboard as well. Um, doesn't have to be expensive all the time. And uh, I think it's my only keyboard with linear switches. And um, yeah, I like them pretty much. They are Gazoo um, U4Ls, I think. Um, so now RJ has found our channel. Hi, how you doing? Welcome to the stack. Um, yes, um, so uh, I'm not sure. I, I think I do prefer um, tactile keyboard switches uh, over linears, but they still feel pretty nice. And they're especially nice for gaming when um, uh, you might not want to have this uh, little... Uh, uh, little piece of resistance every time you press a key. Your dogs are complaining. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for distracting you from your dogs. Oh, I'm, oh the, the poor dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiled they are. On the other hand, don't they deserve it? Aren't they really, really good boys or girls? What kind of dogs do you have? Gee, tell us all about it. You made them dog houses. S uh, separate dog houses, even. Yeah, they are spoiled. Okay, so uh, where do we start? Uh, I'd say we start uh, with the infrastructure part of the stream. Um, uh, we've picked Prometheus as our future monitoring solution. And um, uh, recently I've been setting this up in our Chef infrastructure code. And uh, today I discovered that I um, introduced a bug that uh, prevents alerts from going out. Let me just check chat. Uh, G writes Paxton is a Shiba Inu Beagle mix. That sounds amazing. Oh, it must be so cute. Scooter is a pure Beagle. That sounds cute as well. Sassy. There's a third one. Is a Sh Shih Tzu mystery mix. Okay. So uh, you seem to be into Asian races. That's interesting. Sassy's origin story is her mom ran away and came back with puppies, so we don't know the second breed. Okay. Sassy's mom going on an adventure and bringing back souvenirs. We don't have any dogs here in the family. Um, I think dogs would be welcome, but uh, we are busy enough taking care of the of the neighbor's cats, so uh, that's convenient. Neighbor pays the food and uh, uh, we get to, get to get them their cuddles. Don't tell our neighbor. Okay, um, do you guys, I would probably have cats, but I'm allergic. Well, uh, I am allergic to cats too, um, pretty much so. But especially at this time of year, I have to take allergy meds anyway because of hay fever. Uh, I'm, I'm allergic to pollen as well. So um, uh, that uh, takes care of the cat hair allergy as well. Yeah, I, I, I'm, the, I'm the same. I'm not deathly allergic, but uh, uh, yeah, my, my nose swells up. Sometimes I even get issues with my, with my eyes and... Uh, eyes tearing up and things like that yeah um the right eye gets swollen shut that's that's bad that's bad i had a strange mystery allergy a few years ago 
where if I didn't take allergy meds in time, um, my lip, especially my upper lip, would swell up, and uh, uh, parts of my face as well. Uh, my wife said I, I'd look completely different. Um, and uh, then I'd get uh, a rash uh, um, over my back and arms and uh, yeah it would be quite itching and uh, I never found out what caused it and um, as suddenly as it came a few years later uh, it di disappeared as well um, so without any change in my lifestyle in my uh, nutrition in in the house or anything uh, it was really strange very annoying and strange um, but I'm happy that it's gone so, uh, let me introduce you to my new bug that I found. So, what I did recently, and I'll show it here in the uh, Prometheus Frysteel Chef Cookbook. That's Ruby code, by the way, um, with a lot of chef um, internal resources. Um, I introduced a proxy, and this proxy um, should first of all take care of authentication so that access to Prometheus and its uh, partner service alert manager would be protected. And I decided to um, run them on a single uh, host and host name uh, on a single port as well. Um, internally, these services, of course, are running on different ports. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I can show you that. Um, can I though? Oh, I'm passing in the alert manager URL and the Prometheus URL. That's why I can't find any port names. So um, let's see, that should be in the attributes file. Yes, here you can see uh, Prometheus has the web listen address localhost 9090. And uh, Alert Manager is running on localhost 9093. And localhost is enough because I have said um, Nginx proxy uh, running in front of it. Um, and um, I've decided to uh, access them via the same host name and simply different paths. So Prometheus is located behind slash Prometheus and Alert Manager is behind slash Alert Manager. And uh, that's exactly what's causing issues now. Um, access to these services works perfectly except for the services themselves. So uh, for example, uh, of course, Prometheus needs to access the Alert Manager service to pass um, alerts. Um, whenever Prometheus um, determines uh, something is not going well, um, uh, it needs to access Alert Manager, and it does so at the moment uh, at localhost 9093. And uh, well, that's where the service is running, right? But what I didn't take into account is that if you access Prometheus or Alert Manager using an external URL that has a path like mine does now, everything needs to have this path um, prefixed. So I can't actually reach the Alert Manager API at localhost 9093 slash anymore. Uh, and or slash API anymore. Now the uh, URL is localhost 1993 alert manager slash API. And I didn't take that into account and that needs to be built in now. So that's the story behind what we are doing today. Let's catch up with chat. Um, RJ wrote, my wife and I have a Shih Tzu one and a half year old, he's adorable and knows it. Yeah, I, I guess you let them know, uh, uh, let them know it um, on a daily basis. And that's important. Paxton's five, Scooter's four, and Sassy's three, says G forever. And he has some, pr or they have some pr praise for my keyboard. Not gonna lie, your keyboard looks super cool. 
I have a green one that looks like one of those typewriter keyboards with the circle keys. Oh, that's that's great. Um, one of these uh, retro keyboards. Yeah, um, I'm very happy with the keyboard uh, as well. And it has my um, favorite keycap set on it. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's the Dracula keycap set um, matching my color scheme in my editor. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with it. It's basically my favorite keyboard of them all, even though there are a lot of keyboards behind me, as you can see, or not. Um, let me I'll go to the side. So there's more over there on the shelf. RJ wrote, I wasn't ever a dog person, but fell in love with my wife's family Cocker Spaniel, who was really old, and whenever I needed to work from there, he'd sleep at my feet. That won me over to dog. Yeah, that's that's what gets you with dogs. Uh, their loyalty and uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, it would they they would win my heart uh, within a few minutes. She forever wrote, when I code, I mostly use Game Builder Garage, a Nintendo Switch game that uses visual coding called Nodons. Interesting. I'll have to look that up. I don't own a, a, a Switch myself, so I can't try it out. Uh, I got a Steam Deck. Um, when did I get it? I think earlier this year. Um, no, end of last year already. Um, and uh, I'm not using it enough, to be honest. RJ just posted a photo. Oh, he's so adorable with the, with the head tilted. Oh my God, can't do that posting cuteness overload on the stream. Mm. That's a thing that I like as well with uh, switching to Discord as our chat. We can actually post pictures. Um, say, uh, having said that, uh, it's of course um, a little dangerous, um, but uh, yeah, I trust people um, generally and uh, I hope you don't disappoint me. He does look like a she after a groom. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's uh, that's also um, uh, due to the race. I guess they look uh, wooly and uh, RJ asked, "How are you finding it?" And I'm not sure about the context anymore. Um, is it about the keyboard? Do you drop it into KDE? Oh, you mean the Steam Deck, the Steam Deck, I see. Um, uh, I, I like it a lot. Uh, it basically drove home the point that it's a perfectly viable to run Windows games on Linux. I, I never was a great gamer, and I so I didn't um, follow gaming news as much, um, and I wasn't into Linux gaming a lot. Um, I played uh, World of Warcraft when I was on Mac. Uh, then I got myself a Windows laptop and I started uh, playing Final Fantasy XIV because I didn't like World of Warcraft and it's uh, um, uh, it's th and the company behind it anymore. Um, and uh, then I switched to Linux and uh, so, uh, as a desktop uh, environment, because I ha suddenly had a laptop running with an NVIDIA graphics card. And um, so uh, I uh, installed Lutris and realized um, with Proton, um, it's uh, perfectly viable to run um, uh, Windows games on Linux. Uh, and uh, so I tried World of Warcraft, as, uh, I tried running um, Final Fantasy, that worked. Later, I installed World of Warcraft again because things seem to get better both with the game and uh, with uh, Activision Blizzard, a little at least. Um, and um, I found both run uh, nicely. And um, on on the Steam Deck, I have lots of Windows games and uh, uh, my, my little one, my 10-year-old son, um, has been playing a lot on it and I need to put in a little bit more time, so it's worth the um, expense, I guess. Um, I recently got a few more games that I'd like to try, that I can uh, try, um, that I can play in, 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 in 
in down times uh, for our little uh, without much uh, time investment. So I really like it. Um, RJ also uh, asked, do you drop it into KDE mode and use it as a Linux desktop? No, I don't. Uh, don't. Uh, I thought about it, but um, I'd pretty much have had to have a separate user account uh, where I can install my dot files and everything and then start uh, using things like a container toolbox or something. I could do that, uh, but uh, at the time, I didn't spend much time investigating it, but uh, at the time it didn't seem to be too easy to uh, run a separate Linux user account on the Steam Deck. Maybe I should um, take another look. I didn't want to use the Steam Deck, the default Steam Deck user account to, to do my to do my work. Um, and uh, yeah, it would be a gimmick anyway, I think, uh, because uh, uh, I wouldn't use this uh, little screen for anything serious anyway. You have a decent community here, says RJ. Thank you very much. I'm trying my best to, to build it up. And um, yeah, and I hope uh, my upcoming uh, Linux course uh, is going to help with that. Um, so the um, command exclamation mark Linux dash course will give you more in, uh, information about that if you're interested. And uh, yeah, G wrote, uh, G uh, posted a uh, GIF epic Wubox dance. <laughs> okay. Mm, let's get back into fixing my issue so we get uh, a working monitoring system, huh? So, uh, what we need to do is we need to add a configuration setting that allows us to uh, add this path prefix. Uh, when we access the alert manager from Prometheus. And Prometheus does have a um, a setting for that. We just need to um, make this setting available to our chef infrastructure code. That's going to happen in the Prometheus X cookbook, which is a cookbook, uh, a base cookbook, you could say, that uh, takes care of the base installation of Prometheus and its uh, auxiliary services. And... Um, here in the Prometheus recipe, we built we built a huge hash, uh, and uh, that's called. Uh, let's see here we write it uh, prom config. Prom config is a huge hash that we build up in the code above these li these lines. Um, we simply turn it into YAML and write it into the Prometheus.yaml file. And um, in this prom config hash, we need to somewhere include the correct setting for uh, accessing the alert manager. Let me see how that works. Uh, maybe let's look up um, how this is supposed to be configured. Prometheus configuration. So, in the configuration file, we have the alert manager config. And here is a setting path prefix, which by default is simply slash. And we need to turn that into alert manager slash. I do not think that there is actually an alert manager config block in here. Um, that's supposed to be under alerting. Alerting, then alert managers. And under that, we can then um, define the path prefix. G forever, you are into Wubox. Whatever Wubox are, I've I haven't never heard of it. And Apple too. Yeah, those are amazing. Uh, they're really hard to get because they are uh, there are fewer and fewer of them around, and most of them are in the hands of collectors.
that's an interesting effect, which I didn't anticipate. RJ um, answered to the uh, bot uh, message, and uh, now the bot is answering, and uh, the bot is not answering correctly, though. I have no idea where Prompt uh, got its information from, but it's definitely not um, uh, from my course information. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, so the, the chatbot that I'm, I'm using has an AI component. I guess they simply pass things on to ChatGPT. And uh, so you can actually um, have a conversation with the bot. But uh, we need to be careful with uh, with uh, factual information here. Interesting. I don't need to find out how to fix um, issues like this. Hmm. But uh, yeah, let's not get too distracted. I'll have to fix that another time. Just be aware that uh, answers by the bot might actually not be true. In this case, they are not true. Um, RJ asked, do you have a rough, rough idea how long each lesson will be? Um, so uh, I'm going to spend about two hours every week uh, doing a lecture on the course topics. And um, uh, it's, it'll depend on the uh, chapters, um, how much we can get done during these two, two and a half hours. Um, but uh, I guess uh, the course in, in itself will run for about 10 weeks and uh, we'll record um, each and every lesson. So you'll be able to, to watch them uh, whenever you like. If you can't attend them in person, um, they, they are going, going, going to be on this stream slot, actually. Um, so on, on my Thursday afternoons. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll do them live. And um, I'll also record them and put them on the course forum, um, which is part of the Obsative BBS. Um, and uh, then you can watch them uh, uh, whenever you like. You can also re-watch parts of it, for example, to, to um, review things or, or something like that. And uh, on Tuesday evenings, at least in my time zone, we are going to have um, uh, group calls. We are going to do them here on the Discord. And... Um, that's where you can ask questions in person and uh, we'll do a few more exercises and things like that. So um, there's going to be an interactive and in-person part as well. Uh, these group uh, um, calls will not be streamed um, on Twitch or uh, Obsative. Uh, they'll be limited to uh, participants of the course. So, um, alerting. Uh, let's get back to um, our code. I don't think there's an alerting configuration. There is. Okay. If we have an alert manager configuration, then we need to uh, add the alerting part to the prom config. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, if that's the case, we'll simply add this uh, configuration setting um, up here, the path prefix. And that's going to be um, a node attribute. If you look around, you can see uh, references to these here. Uh, so node um, cookbook name, which is just a string with the co cookbook name Prometheus X, and then a sub hash key user and sub hash key group. Um, these are node attributes which uh, you can influence in different ways with uh, the chef environment. Um, that basically allows you to um, introduce variables 
into your infrastructure code from the outside so you can for example set um, some certain value uh, on node a differently from node b because every node every server has its own set of node attributes and chef uh, always takes the local set of node attributes when it executes these cookbooks and their recipes i hope i was able to explain that in an understandable way so um, these node attributes uh, get injected into this code from the outside um, and I can actually show you how that happens uh, with this specific thing later. Um, and we'll simply introduce a new node attribute under the um, namespace of this cookbook name, uh, which is the string Prometheus X. It just um, uh, uh, saves me from having to write that out every time and it's it would be uh, easy to change, but I don't think um, uh, it would actually... Uh, necessary uh, chief forever also uh, is chatting on twitch I just noticed who box is from the game my singing monsters okay I look, I look into that that sounds like a fun game and earlier wrote I also have an Arduino mega 2560 also super fun to mess with around with yeah uh, these microcontrollers are amazing I mean um, most of the keyboards I own are uh, custom keyboards um, that are also based on, on microcontrollers that you can program. Um, uh, I uh, quickly learned how powerful the QMK keyboard firmware is, and that allows me to um, basically program my keyboards as much as I want. And uh, that's, that's pretty amazing. You can do great stuff and uh, do stuff that makes you more productive, and I always love that. Okay, G4 Forever, accidentally popping into Twitch. Um, there should also be a regular message. Yeah, uh, Stream Elements, it keeps posting that. Okay, that's nice. Just to keep people informed and want, uh, so that people don't wonder why I'm, I'm not responding on, on Twitch, for example. Okay, so the new node attribute is going to be under the Prometheus. Uh, sub namespace or uh, Prometheus level and then we'll have to introduce um, the uh, path prefix I uh, no, that's alert uh, managers in this case path prefix yeah I guess we'll we'll do it like this And as far as I can see, this is global um, across all these targets. I only have one target at the moment anyway. Um, we could introduce an array for targets later, but at the moment that's not necessary, so we keep it simple. And um, so here we are um, introducing the alert managers path prefix. Let me um, copy that and... Uh, set a default value in my attributes file here uh, and that's going to be here in the Prometheus section uh, I guess we'll simply add it below cookbook name uh, using a variable as this namespace uh, key here also um, prevents typos uh, from uh, introducing bugs because uh, would I um, write this literal string all the time I might for example leave out the X and simply write Prometheus and uh, of course uh, that, that way I would um, create a new hash key um, that might not have any effect because it doesn't get addressed anymore uh, anywhere and um, by using cookbook name I can prevent that because if I use, for example, uh, cookbook num or something, if I mistype the variable name, um, I'll get a more, uh, I, I get an error, um, for example, because I'm, I'm accessing the hash key nil, for example, if I uh, mistype the variable name. So it does have um, 
advantages uh, working with variable names uh, instead of uh, literal strings here. And uh, then we introduce uh, the default value for our um, attribute, which is called alert manager's path prefix. And of course, the default should be slash. Or should it? Yes, it should be. Um, this cookbook doesn't know anything about prefixes uh, being used. So we need to make it an option, but uh, not the default behavior. So now we have an alert manager's path prefix. Mm. That gets used here. And I guess it would make sense to actually test that. And uh, we'll do that in the Prometheus test suite here. Here we can set um, custom values for uh, attributes that get used in our test environment. So for Chef Infrastructure Coding, you um, use a tool named Test Kitchen, of course. Um, and Test Kitchen spins up virtual machines with uh, Linux images that you predefine. And then it runs your infrastructure code. Um, uh, infrastructure code in these VMs, and then you can actually run tests on the result. So uh, it'll look at the state of the VMs and uh, it can check contents of configuration files, it can check services, it can check access to um, network ports and things like that. So you can make sure that your infrastructure code is actually doing what it's supposed to do. And in this case, I'm going to um, define a, an attribute called, uh, well, uh, it's going to be called alert manager's path prefix, right? And um, we'll do it like this. That means um, we should get an, uh, the correct uh, entry into the Prometheus configuration. And since we this would break um, Prometheus's access to the alert manager because we would have to make the symmetrical change to alert manager itself. Um, at the moment, that's not um, important because uh, in this test environment, Prometheus doesn't talk to Alert Manager. It's not supposed to, so it doesn't matter if that is going to work or not. Um, uh, maybe later um, we should change that. Um, and I can take a look at the tests, how much work that it would take. So let's see. Um, but first, let's uh, spin up the Prometheus test. Um... Uh, wait, uh, that's going to be... We are already next to it. So let's see, is there any test kitchen instance running? No, it's not supposed to. Uh, so what we're going to do is run test kitchen converge. Prometheus Ubuntu. 2004. That's already correct. My shell already has the right commands in its history. Now it's spinning up a um, KVM a virtual machine and then it's going to run um, Chef in it and execute this cookbook. And uh, we can then manually take a look at uh, the uh, configuration file that gets written out and make sure it uh, is correct. For that, I can simply use test kitchen login, which I've um, abbreviated with TKS because TKL was already taken by list. So I used uh, S for shell instead of L for login. And uh, actually um, things broke. So let's take a look at what actually did break. Um, um, we didn't get far, I guess. It says... Uh, 
failed to converge. I have no idea why. So let's take a look at dot kitchen logs. Kitchen log. Um, wrong number of arguments. In. Hmm. In test kitchen itself. Is there even a mention of my code? That's all inside the test kitchen gem. I wonder if that has to do with uh, a recent update to the Ruby version and uh, gems in our repository here. I think that's the first time I'm running a test since upgrading. Maybe I need to install new... No, they are up to date. Hmm, what's going wrong here? So let me see. What we wanted to run was... Uh, kitchen converge. So let's do bundle exec. Uh, kitchen converge... Prometheus Ubuntu 20.04 and I hear my son calling from outside the door. Uh, I'll be right back. And I'm back. Now, um, I have no idea what's happening here. So let's take another look at the log. Um, wrong number of arguments given three expected to Kitchen command. We need to run bundle update. Ooh, lots of updates. See if that fixes things. Nope. Ah, why do I execute that? I wanted to get the log back on screen. That's always annoying if you have to work on your tools instead of with your tools. It's really hard to see where the error actually comes from. Hmm. 
I guess it's the ST SFTP upload method here. And that is a plugin, isn't it? I think that's a kitchen plugin. No, it's, it's part of kitchen sink. Okay. Kitchen sink. Let me see if I can get information about the kitchen sink plugin. And how we update that. First of all, is kitchen sink part of our gem file? Does it get? Yes. Uh, but it says version 2.2. .2. Okay. So let's see. Gem kitchen sink. Is there a 2.2? .2? Yes, there is. Um, 221, that's the latest version. I wonder if that's not... Well, latest version is five years old. I'm afraid that that's completely outdated and unmaintained. And it's only getting used if you use transport SFTP anyway. Which we don't, do we? Uh, that's in the kitchen file for our cookbook. No, it's not getting used anyway. So why not eliminate a potential source of issues and get rid of that? How does it get used anyway? Is that by by default? Or is it in my um, kitchen configuration maybe? I don't remember how this got even installed. So you run Chef Jam install. Uh, it's Chef Jam install, okay. Um, I guess we can uninstall it. Gem, uninstall, kitchen, sink. I do bundle install, it shouldn't go back, come back. Um, gem info, isn't it? Kitchen, sink. It's not there anymore. So let's go back to TKC, running that. But still, okay, could not load the SFTP transport from the load path. Why does it think it should use F SFTP anyway? I'm confused. Maybe it's in my personal configuration. And uh, since that might contain uh, API keys, I'm going to check that in a different uh, window. configuration or 
or include it in your channel file if you use an important link. How weird. <clears throat> transport seems to be set on sftp and that's why the kitchen sink gem does get used in the first place but uh where um can i do an rg maybe um let's go That's all stuff in our infrastructure that deals with SFTP, but there's no... There's net SFTP in the gem file dot lock. Used by Chef itself. Is that persisted somewhere in the dot kitchen? What's the default transport in the test kitchen? Test kitchen transport. Transport. Default transport to use is SSH. And that should work. But uh, why does it use SFTP in my case? Let's kill all the. Oh, I can't even. Can't even destroy these anymore. Again, let's take a look at log, kitchen logs, kitchen log. <clears throat> now it's kitchen loader. Kitchen config. Probably because it tries to um, let's see. Let's let's run Kitchen Doctor. Okay, mm let's run Kitchen Doctor from here. Kitchen Doctor. Could not load the SFTP transport. I must be overlooking something because uh, that's really strange. If I configure transport differently, how do I do that? Test kitchen, chef documentation. Drivers, provisional verified transport, and then name. All right, so let's see.
Transport name specifies which transport. SSH transport is the default on all other operating systems. Obviously not. For some reason, it's not the default on my system. And I can't really tell why. But we should be able to overwrite that, right? Transport. SSH. At least I get a different uh, error now. Conversion of string into hash. Okay, it needs to be uh, a different um, way. It's transport and the name. Okay. That way it works, but I have no idea why it doesn't why why it exists on using SFTP. We don't have any environment variables or something like that. Do we? No. How strange. Okay, let's get back to trying to convert that. And this time it actually works. Yeah, it was kitchen sink that for some reason had an issue, probably because it didn't keep up with uh, either Ruby versions or other dependencies. Okay, it uh, did convert successfully. So let's take a look at the insides of our test VM. Mm, and that should happen in its Etsy Prometheus in our Prometheus YAML, less Prometheus YAML. Down here, we should have alert managers, path prefix alert manager, static configs, targets, and localhost. So it should talk to localhost 1993 slash alert manager. I guess we don't even need the slash alert manager. And maybe we should have a, well, I, I don't think we need the trailing slash. And since it's the prefix, yeah, let's keep it this way. Okay. So it does what it's supposed to, to do. And now let me take a look at... I guess that's something that we can actually commit. Because that's working now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, do a... Um, bundle exec uh, rake bump minor exegy joins the chat welcome to the stack my man how are you doing uh 070 and uh, we need to document what we've done with this version in our change log. V070. It's 2023. 05. Um, 25. Edit. Note attribute. To configure a path prefix. for alert manager access path prefix for alert manager access in prometheus let's write let's use a capital a here okay that's that and that should take care of things. So let's do a rake test, which is going to run code linting and stuff. Nope. And there is lines too long. Um, we still have an 80 column limit. 
which we might actually extend to 120 or something because 80 seems to be a little bit too much on the conservative side but it is like it is if we don't change it now we'll fix it like this I did say three offenses so there's more uh, yes okay uh, we do catch a server exception and that's also uh, that's correct because uh, chef internally is using an older Ruby version at least the chef version that we are using at the moment um, and so HTTP client exception is correct we do have to uh, silence Rubocop in this case and that's in uh, Prometheus 39 and 64 so here, yes, okay. Interesting enough, there is a comment, but... Uh... Okay, here. What? Invalid data back path? Okay, yeah, yes, uh, okay, makes sense. <laughs> For some reason, there's the comment that would describe um, what I'm typing now, but that's gone. So someone has to have uh, removed that. Strange. Uh, Rubocop disable this and enable this. Maybe we'll put it down here. And uh, then it was 64, which must have used, uh, moved a little. Uh, nope, that's not what I meant. Uh, let's go back. Okay, that's that. Exited asked, how are you? I'm fine, I'm excellent. Uh, great weather outside and um, lots of nice people here in chat. Uh, what could I ask for more? Hey, Division by Zero, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Yes, I'm uh, I'm uh, working on Prometheus because um, my recent change with the proxy broke um, the way uh, Prometheus is talking to its own alert manager. That's why we are not getting any alerts from Prometheus anymore. Um, and uh, yeah, I had to introduce a fix for that. Exit writes, I'm giving serious consideration to buying a Framework 16 laptop, uh, the new one that's uh, going to come out in a few weeks' time. That's an amazing machine, the Framework 16. Um, it would be a little bit too big for me, uh, uh, but I'm going to get a Framework 13. If only uh, to support framework because they their philosophy and motivation is so amazing with uh, repairable la laptops where you can't where you can not only um, uh, replace the battery or something more common like that um, but every little piece So I'm not getting any alerts for another reason as well. Well, I don't mind not getting any alerts during my stream. So, uh, okay, let's uh, try again. Style issues should be resolved now. Replace and upgrade, that's an, another amazing thing. If, if you simply can get a new CPU board and upgrade your CPU. How, how, how amazing is that in a laptop?
Yeah, I really want Framework to be around for a long time, and that's why my next uh, laptop is definitely going to be a Framework laptop. If you want something um, serious, the Framework 16 is definitely a good good choice. It has a great um, a great screen. The 16 inch screen has a 2560 by 1800, I think. So great resolution. Um, you can scale that down by 1.5 or even 2 to get a nice and crisp um, uh, graphics that uh, aren't too tiny for your eyes. So yeah, um, it's it's great from a hardware uh, perspective already, and then you get all the other advantages on top, like replace, replaceable parts. You can even exchange the, the keyboard and, and things like that. And with the 16, you'll actually get a keyboard with QMK support in the future at least. I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, included in the in the uh, uh, default model, but they have announced that the 16 will allow you to um, uh, reprogram the keyboard using QMK. So you have a programmable um, laptop keyboard where you can, for example, uh, uh, swap escape and control and do all the things that make it easier to type and to develop. That's really amazing. My sales pitch was successful with RJ, I guess. <laughs> Probably not your whole Moolander con configuration, but if there are layers that you'd like to keep, uh, you will be able to, to program them, of course, yeah. So if, for example, you have a, a specific layer, um, or you have some, um, say, uh, tap and hold configurations, where when you hold a key, it does different thing than we, when you tap it, um, these things are 100% possible. It won't have the uh, array of thumb keys the Moonlander has, of course, so you will be a little bit limited in terms of the number of layers that you can access, but um, other than that, um, there's definitely a lot of stuff that you could do. Okay, tests are successful, so um, I can actually commit this. Um, Division by Zero, did you know that uh, something uh, in our um, chef setup uh, is broken now that we've switched to Ruby 3? Um, I had to force uh, Kitchen to use SSH as the transport instead of SFTP because otherwise it would use the kitchen sink gem, which um, uh, fails in its own way. Um, I removed the, the, the gem from, from our um, gem file, but I had to actually um, explicitly force, um, sorry, um, force kitchen to use SSH as the transport. Otherwise it would keep using SS SFTP as the transport and using the, the broken um, kitchen sink gem. So I have no idea. I have no idea um, why it would even keep using SFTP if that's not part of the uh, gem file anymore. But um, I, um, I didn't take the time to investigate that thoroughly by uh, hard wiring it to SSH, which should be the default anyway. Uh, it does work. Alrighty, so. Uh... 
Yeah, the strange thing is that it's it wasn't uh, hard coded in here. I had to actually add this transport section to force it to use SSH. I have no idea why it would keep using SFTP in the first place. But that's something that we can um, take a look at later. So that's that. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, let's commit this. That's a feature for Prometheus X. Add path prefix for alert manager access. Yes, or let's say if alert manager uses a path prefix Prometheus needs to be configured accordingly. This change adds the necessary node attribute. Or the necessary configuration and related node attribute. And uh, I should have created a fix, uh, an, an issue for that, and um, there's still time to do so. So let's go over here into new monitoring solution. This epic should get a new issue to do. No, I'm, I'm going to add an issue here. Add a new issue. Issue title, um, um yes. Can't access alert manager when path prefix is configured. Prefixes for Prometheus and Alert Manager, or to say um, to run Prometheus and Alert Manager behind the same proxy host in an unintended concept or as an unintended. Extended consequence. Prometheus now can't talk to Alert Manager anymore. We can because we know the prefix, <laughs> uh, but uh, Prometheus can't. So that's that, and uh, that should definitely get a bug label, and that's a. Hmm, an issue for the Prometheus X cookbook. Uh, wait, where did it create this? It created it in, in the complete wrong um, uh, project here. How did I end up here? How strange. I clicked new issue and it decided to create an issue in dashboard API. Probably overlooked something there. Um, let's see, can I move this? Uh, um, doesn't look like it, huh? Oh, how stupid. 
There was a way to remove issues, though. Anyway, let's delete that. And let's go directly to the Chef Cookbooks project to create a new issue here. Division by Zero writes, I'm building some necessary Prometheus rules right now and this is quite some fun. Yes, it is. There's so much uh, potential in there. So that's that. Uh, Prometheus can't access alert manager if can't access alert manager when when a path prefix is configured. Okay, I'll assign that to me. I've already resolved it anyway. The epic is a uh, new monitoring solution. Milestone is Prometheus monitoring in operation, which should be any time now. Uh, the label is Prometheus X and bug, as I said. Iteration is this week, obviously. Okay, now let's create this issue, which will give me an, an issue number, 841. And that means uh, I can't commit this because I'm in the master branch. We first have to create a new branch, 841. Um, Prometheus path prefix. Now I can commit it. Feature Prometheus X uh, path prefix when for alert manager access. Can't really put it more concisely than that. Um, this change adds a node attribute to tell Prometheus if alert manager is running with a path prefix configured or if alert manager is configured with a path prefix. Wait a second. Um, if that's the case, we should already know about that because uh, it's the same cookbook that sets up alert manager. So even though I have, uh, I have uh, committed a working version now, uh, let's take another look at our attributes. Um, so there's this web external URL which contains the path prefix. And how do we use that? We do use that in our Prometheus Frysteel cookbook. And here we say uh, it's uh, the current node FQDN and then slash Prometheus for this service and slash alert manager for this service. So what we actually could do here is extract the path from our external URL which by default is what? It's empty. So we could be, we could use the URI class 
to extract a path from the external URL. Hmm. Hmm. So I'd like to split this up. To use something like web external host and separately the pa uh, path prefix. And we could simply concatenate them to get the uh, what's now the external URL. But if uh, I have a separate um, path prefix uh, attribute, I can simply... Um, yeah, that, that uh, new attribute here becomes obsolete. The only thing is, uh, if I split these up now, this is going to end up being a uh, breaking change. Wait, won't it? Let's see. doesn't have to. We could use web external URL as it is and introduce the path prefix here, which is going to be by default empty. And uh, we'll simply go and concatenate the external URL with the path prefix. So as our system uh, is set up right now, where the prefix is actually um, included in the URL, um, that won't break things because it'll simply concatenate an, an empty string. Um, but in order to fix the problem that I'm building the code for at the moment, uh, we could then take the path prefix out of the external URL and uh, move it to the path prefix and uh, we'll get the same behavior, but then we can use this path prefix up here in Prometheus, where I'm going to introduce the same thing. So um, let's see. Uh, we can get rid of this. And uh, just like we have a path prefix with uh, alert manager, We'll also add a path prefix for Prometheus. Then, in the Prometheus configuration, external URL, we would have to uh, concatenate or simply um, add the um, path prefix here. Uh, da, 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 da. We'll do that outside just to keep things legible, I think. So we'll take this out. And move it here. Um, that's a prom URL. And uh, path prefix. Uh, we want 
need to have double quotes here now. And then we can use prom URL here. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Exegeet. I wanted to try warp myself, but then I realized it's Mac only. It doesn't support Tmux. At all. That's very strange, and that would rule it out for me anyway. So they don't support Tmux, they they just... Um, yeah, you, you're basically bound to, to use their own kind of multiplexing that they hopefully offer. I try to use um, the um, built-in features when I use the Kitty terminal, which is also available for Mac. And uh, yeah, it was quite nice, but uh, for example, it didn't have the session management that Tmux has, where I can simply switch between my projects um, like this. Um, so uh, yeah, I came back to Tmux and I'm still very happy using it. There isn't anything that gets in my way. Quite to the contrary, um, now I can scroll with the mouse and everything, so it's really, really convenient. Okay, um, we'll have to do the same thing for uh, the alert manager. Where we define this here. That's alert manager, and that's not prom URL, that's, uh, oops. Alert manager URL, we should probably use Prometheus URL as well. Um, alert manager path prefix, and then we're using this in here, web external URL. Uh, alert manager URL. That's that. Um, let's go back and uh, Prometheus URL. Do the same here. I guess that's that. We could even define a pa default path prefix of slash, because that's actually the case. So um, let's do that. By default, we have slash as our path prefix. And um, appending that to the URL shouldn't cause any issues. Famous last words. Um, that's that, and that means we can also change our Prometheus configuration, because where's the path prefix that we introduced earlier? That's here. Instead of saying Prometheus alert managers path prefix, it's simply alert manager path prefix so let's see did we actually configure path prefixes for our prometheus uh Set up. No. Okay. But I guess we should actually
Uh, wait. Um... Yeah, um, we'll set this up in here. Path prefix. That should still set up Prometheus correctly. We might have to adapt our tests though, okay. Exit wrote, I picked up some config settings from Primogen and I don't think I can go back. No, um, there are a few people who have really good um, setups for Tmux, Envim and things like that. And yeah, I'm, I'm much too uh, happy with my current terminal setup that I would ever consider uh, giving that up, giving Tmux up or giving up NeoVim. Okay, so let's let's give this a try, right? Um, where's my TKC command? I shouldn't have to do this, but uh, okay. I did look at Harpoon. Um, when I did, I decided to, uh, not to use it for some reason. Um, Probably because I had some equivalent setup uh, that uh, wouldn't make Harpoon uh, necessary for me. But maybe um, I should have another look. Things might have changed. Control Carrot is uh, amazing. I discovered this far too late. Okay, so we did uh, convert successfully, which is already a great thing. Uh, there's no shell anymore because I think we've rebuilt this. Uh, yeah, 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 we rebuilt this. So uh, let's uh, kill this. Kill pain and create a new one. Do another TKS. This time we have a shell. Uh, let's go to Prometheus. So Alert Manager should now have an external URL. Uh, no, that's in the uh, systemd service. Systemd, system alert manager. Uh, yeah. uh, the web external URL is just slash alert manager. Uh, not sure if this is actually going to work. Exactly, and uh, it, it toggles between the file you have on screen right now and the, f the file you had previously on screen. So uh, here I am in my kitchen YAML file, and if I press uh, Control Carrot, or it's simply Control Six actually, um, then uh, it goes back to Prometheus RB, and then my kitchen YAML Prometheus RB, so I can quickly switch between two files, between, for example, a uh, Rails model and its test, so I can uh, switch back and forth. Um, it, it makes things so much quicker. Even if you have uh, plugins installed like Telescope, for example, where I can get a list of all my files um, that I have open and uh, fuzzy search them, um, this still isn't as quick as simply pressing Control 6. So, uh, does Alert Manager actually work? It, did it even start? Uh, system control, uh, status, Alert Manager. It might not have, yeah. So, Alert Manager invalid scheme. Yeah, we don't have HTTP and stuff in here. What's the default value for the external URL? 
Can we provide something that doesn't break what we have so far? Uh, configuration. External. Oh, that's a command line uh, attribute. It's not even documented in here, I think. Um, so let's do alert manager dash dash help. External URL. Externally reachable. If the URL has a path portion, it will be used to prefix all HTTP endpoints. If omitted, relevant URL components will be derived automatically. Is there a default though? Uh, it's web dot external URL. That's the default value. What does that even mean? I mean, if zero colon ninety ninety three is the default web listen address, I guess we could simply say zero ninety ninety three is also the external URL. Which would make this work, I guess. Oh no, it needs a, a, a host name, doesn't it? Well, I guess something that doesn't break is if we say HTTP node FQDN. Everyone loves Harpoon. I'll have another look. So if we use this, and then we would simply uh, append this path prefix, that should probably get things working. And, oops, no, I didn't intend to delete this. I just wanted to copy it because we'll use it down here as well. And of course, we'll have to use the port number 1993. And uh, in this case, 1990. Okay, let's do another converge and see how this works. RJ, thanks for stopping by. Uh, so good to have you. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you soon. Have a great rest of your day. Okay, let's see. Alert Manager is working because it was started with, uh, what was it started with? Web external URL test VM uh, hostname 1993 slash alert manager because we did actually configure this as the uh, path prefix in our test setup. Brilliant. And um, of course, sh this doesn't have to, to work in testing, but it will only work in testing if Prometheus also did use this um, path prefix. And uh, yes, it does. It does use slash alert manager as the path prefix to access alert manager. And that fixes things even better than before. Um, 
yeah, we didn't include a trailing slash by default because the trailing slash comes automatically by, from the path prefix. And yes, if uh, in, in order to use it with our specific configuration and setup, we need to be a little bit careful, but uh, that should take care of things. Okay, so um, I can actually log out here um, and commit this, and then we'll run another test, and uh, then I'll do my merge request. Well, that even rhymed. Okay, so that's that. Uh, it's what was this? Uh, it wasn't a chore by itself. Maybe a fix. It's not a bug, but uh, it's a fix in the sense of avoid overlapping attributes instead of uh, introducing a new node attribute for Prometheus that's only getting used if alert manager is configured a certain way. This change makes use of that certain configuration without needing another attribute for continuity to describe. Maybe I should just link this stream recording. Well, I, I'll keep it this way. I hope it doesn't make at least a little bit of sense. Exegete, thank you for, for stopping by and for chatting. It was an honor as always. Hope to see you soon. Have a great day and, uh, well, um, also um, have a great weekend um, in a few days' time. And uh, all the best for the wee one with the dentist. Okay, so that's that. Um... Mm. Let's run another test. Should be run quickly enough. leaving you're so mean <laughs> no I'm just kidding um, uh, I'm going to uh, stop um, in a few minutes anyway because I've been going at it for two hours now so um, 
Well, yeah, yeah, I should get some exercise. I was just uh, thinking maybe I should um, keep going because there's still a little bit of work to do um, outside of this change here. This took longer than I expected, but uh, it's a nice, uh, elegant change. So I'm happy with the time I spent working on it. Uh, but there's another customer waiting for us to roll out a uh, feature in our uh, hosting dashboard. And uh, we are al uh, actually ready to roll it out, so um, so close. On the other hand, I always need to think about burnout. And at the moment I'm pushing myself pretty hard. Um, not too hard, but... Um, doing my daily work on our hosting platform and on top of that spending uh, quite a few hours a day working on my Linux course and Obsidian in general, uh, it does take quite a bit of energy out of me. And uh, so maybe it's a good idea to say, okay, you've done good work, even though there's another feature waiting um, to be rolled out. Um, I probably should just tell the customer that it's going to take another day or two for us to roll it out. And Mu leaves with uh, happy acking later on, which probably tells me uh, that there are going to be a few uh, Prometheus alerts waiting for me. I'll have to take a look at that also. So I saw that there was a, 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 a failure uh, during this test. We have to take a look at that. Yes, I, uh, I think I know what's, what's, what's failed already. Um, uh, I changed the uh, path prefix for Alert Manager, and there are tests that try to talk to Alert Manager. Um, and these tests, of course, are now failing. Um, if, I t if I change the test configuration by sub introducing something like a path prefix, I of course need to uh, update the tests as well. So I can uh, already go and go into test integration, Prometheus alert manager. And here we talk to localhost 1993. That's not going to work anymore because we've introduced the um, prefix alert manager and that should take care of things. So um, we did fail Prometheus, Ubuntu 16 and 20. Uh, now that I fixed the test, uh, we can actually just run the test again. We don't need any changes on the infrastructure side. It still doesn't work. Uh, we still get a 301 instead of 200. Um, well, I guess we can simply uh, take a look at why that is and where it wants to... Ah, I see. Yes, now that I've... Uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I can already predict what's going to happen because we introduced the host name as the uh, external URL. If we actually send a request to localhost, it's highly likely that it's going to um, redirect us to the host name URL. Um, but let's make sure that's actually the case. So uh, let's log in. And I shouldn't have even to, to become rude, but uh, let's see. We curl localhost 1993 slash alert manager. And we need to see the uh, returned headers. And it wants to move us to alert manager slash. Okay, interesting. Well, we can do that. Let's see. Does it work? It does. Let's do the same with the uh, 1604. Mm. Yep, that fixes things. Okay. Um. So. We'll do a git amend, just to add this to the previous commit. Then we'll push it. And then we have a URL for a new merge request. Uh, 
Uh, tells me to copy the change log entry. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Uh, head change log. We should actually uh, update the change log as well, because it doesn't actually uh, added note attributes to configure path prefixes for Prometheus and Alert Manager. That's that. Now we can uh, do a force push. There's not a merge request yet. Can still rewrite history, but uh, now I'm going to. Uh, well, I did not um, copy the change log. Well, let's do that. Hopefully the CI system will have uh, successful tests as well. Alrighty. Now let me think if... Uh, uh, well, how I'm going to proceed. Mm. I first have some tea. Yeah, I guess uh, I'm going to wrap things up here. Then I'll reorient myself uh, and see what's still uh, cooking. Uh, in the team and um, then I'll probably uh, inform uh, our customer that uh, the rollout of the feature they're waiting for uh, will just take uh, another day or two and uh, that's going to be it for me today I guess it was much product this day was much more productive than yesterday yesterday i was completely knackered from from the morning on uh coffee didn't help and uh so uh, i didn't get much done yesterday so um, i'm pretty happy that today looks a little bit different in terms of results and uh yeah tomorrow i'm going to have the day off because uh it's uh, every last friday in uh, uh, every month is our FFF Friday, our family, friends and fun Friday, where we can do whatever we like, except working. And uh, so, um, yeah, it's going to be an early weekend for me. Is there anything else that you folks would like to ask? If there is anything that you'd like to share, um, I'm still here. Uh, I'll be here for a few more minutes. And uh, I guess, yeah, I'll end the stream at this point but we can keep chatting on Discord. That's another advantage. And uh, yeah, I'll be back uh, tomorrow afternoon with the Obsidive office hour. I guess I'm, I'm still going to do that. If not, uh, I'll let you folks know in Discord. Um, and uh, other than that, if you'd like, uh, you can also join our Obsidive community forum. Um, that's uh, on... Uh, uh, that's linked on the obstive.com website. You can join for free or you can, if you like, support me by getting a support membership at five euro per month. Um, and you can sponsor me a, a coffee a month uh, that way. That's basically my substitution for uh, Twitch subscriptions that I gave up when I gave up my affiliate status 
for example, to be able to uh, multi-stream to Twitch like I'm doing at the moment. And to be more in independent as well. So, uh, yeah, um, if you'd like to get a support subscription, um, I'd highly appreciate it. But uh, that being said, I think that's a good point to, to stop here. Um, either I'll see you tomorrow afternoon or next week on Tuesday, 2 p.m. Irish time, 1 p.m. UTC. And until then, take care. <laughs>